Pleased to say we have Kevin Peterson and Ricky Ponding joining us on Sky Sport Ashes podcast. What I'm not pleased to say is rain ceased play at around just a little bit before 5.30 with Australia 130 for two, a lead of 221. It was all good at the start of the day. I think we've said that every morning of the Ashes so <laughs> far. Second ball of the day, Cam Green. Again. Again, with some superb hands to get soaked second ball. Yeah, very good catch. I must admit, admit I missed that. I was still down in the zone getting the pregame <laughs> stuff done and heard a mm. sort of a muffled cheer. And as soon as I heard that, I thought, well, that can't be a boundary. It's not a boundary. It <laughs> a whole lot louder than it, than it was. But, yeah, yeah another, another great catch. I mean, it was a really hectic second part of their batting innings, wasn't it? The one for 188 um, and then collapsed the way they did. They've led Australia right back into this game. You say hectic. What was your quote? Kamikaze? Yeah. Uh just because of the way in which the wickets fell and how quickly they fell. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it, it was, a, it was a, um, a fascinating period of play because Australia got their tactics right on this wicket mm. and it worked. Top of off, nick him to slip, not going to work on this wicket, hasn't worked so far. But bowling bumpers for 20 overs has worked, did work. And, and what was quite interesting is this morning they started again with the same tactic and it worked again. Yep. And we, we said last night on the podcast about how taxing that can be on the quicks. So England could have played along the lines of, well, we'll just wear you down a little bit. But they didn't. They went after it. And probably for Harry Brook, it's going to be something that he's going to cop right throughout the series. Yeah, and if you look at it as well, it's, I think it's the one big advantage that this Australian team have over England. Because England bringing yeah. Tong into this game have, have had one that can do it. Yeah. And that's about it. But the Australians have got four yep. that can come in and do it. So mm -hmm. even, you know, to try and get through three or four overs last night, which is what we said about Travis Head in the last test, just get through four, three or four overs, that's all you need to do. Well, you can't here because they've got mm -hmm. 20... 25 over straight, they can keep coming at you with it. And, you know, the way that England have tried to combat it here hasn't worked. Being ultra-aggressive against it hasn't worked. But I think it's given Australia a bit of a sniff, not only a sniff in this game, but as you said, it's, it's shown some cracks in some batsmen that they might yeah. get, not just for the rest of this series, but for the rest of their careers. Yeah. And the big matchup, exactly. I think, yeah. is... Boland we were surprised that he wasn't playing at Lords because it probably suited him a little bit more. Mitchell Stark comes in, yep. takes three for 88 and can get the ball really up around the grill. Yep. I mean, I don't think Mitchell Stark was picked to bowl bounces. Hmm. So it, it worked uh, and I think it's his pace that was his enabler. Hmm. Uh, as what Punas just said now, four, four enablers. Uh, I mean, it's pretty cool as a captain if you can turn to uh, four blokes who can bowl your 90 mile an hour bumpers. Yeah. Uh, where England just don't have it. They don't have one guy at 90 mile an hour. And you can see that. And, and unfortunately for England, it's, it's been an issue and it'll continue to be an issue. Johnny Besto was the last of the recognised batters to go at 311 uh, for seven. And they were still trailing by 104. It was left sort of mm. to the tail. I think that's probably what Australia has done well at Edgebaston to put some runs on with the tail. And that's what they needed from England. Yeah, and it's, it's been one of England's strengths through their cricket over a long period of time. Even with their one-day cricket, they've had lots of all-rounders. Their batting's always been really deep. Look back to last week, they had Mo and Ali coming in at eight. And, you know, so they've, they've had that, that stronger sort of tail end. They haven't got that this game with Moe not being there mm. and going with the four quicks. Their, mm -hmm. their tail is a bit more fragile, which, which I think was one thing they had to work out last night. They had to understand that last night and not be so blasé about the way they were going about their batting. So I'm sure, I mean, we've heard this ultra aggressive approach and take bold decisions and all that. I mean, I'm really intrigued. The longer this game goes and whatever Australia decided to set England, I'm, I'm intrigued to see what their, what their tactics are going to be chasing these runs because they're going to get that again. They're going to get the same stuff yeah. Yeah. again. Not just um, tomorrow. You know, five or six so. overs in when the ball stops moving or if it's yeah. not perfect bowling conditions, they're going to get it all over again. And, yeah. they, and if England decide to take it on, well, let, let's see what happens. You uh, had an interview with Steve Smith at the start of the day, talking to him about how he might be required to bowl a little yeah. bit. They actually turned to Travis Head for a few overs. He got yeah. two for 17. That's going to be another question now for Australia with yep. no Nathan Lyon. With and, the and how long do they bat? Yeah. And what do they set? Uh, and where do they feel comfortable? Uh, and do they want to win the game? I'm sure they want to win the game. That's just your Aussie way. You want to win the game. Um, they, <laughs> they won't give England a sniff. Mm. That is for sure. Mm. There's no ways they're going to declare and say, hey, England... Come on, let's see how brave you are. They just won't do it, especially with the spinner down. But tomorrow is going to be fascinating. I mean, I don't know what the forecast is. I didn't think it was going to rain today, and mm. it's rained. Uh, so I don't, think, I don't think there's anything forecast tomorrow, but who knows? Two clear days, two good days. If tomorrow's a great day for batting, I don't know. What do you guys think you'll mm. set, set England? Well, I've got a, maybe a slightly different thought on it, because if, if 
everything we hear from England is that they're not going to be happy with the draw. They're going to do everything they can to try and win the game. Well, if I'm Australia, I'm setting them. I'm just batting as long as I can yeah. and setting the most ridiculous total and saying, okay. Over to you. Uh, That's what I said. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Correct. And because yeah. they've actually said they've got to come out and try and get them. Yeah. So make it as unachievable as possible. Mm -hmm. Let them go as hard as they can. What's yeah. unachievable? 500? Well, what are they? 220. Oh, well, they've got to get 220. I mean, that's, still, that's still a lot of batting. But Record absolutely. chase at Lords, what did we just find out the other day? It was 3, 344. Yep. Um, that was for one, and that one week it was a run out. So. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if Australia did that. <laughs> and it was a while ago. Yeah. I mean, so you, so you think about it. A couple of sessions tomorrow batting. If it's a if it's a good day, hundred runs a session. They've got 400, 420 lead. What's what's the lead now? Two twenty. Uh, two twenty one. So two twenty one. So you got four twenty one by T. Then you can do the whole half hour at the end of the day with. Mm. If you can have a smack at it, you can get five hundred. I mean, then it is all systems go. Talking about, I can we see you just sitting there, just sitting there, going, go for it. No, no, <laughs> go for it. No, I'm, I'm, and the re no, the reason I think I'm smiling about it, 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 I'm fascinated to see how they're going to approach it. Yeah. Because yeah. they, the more they keep talking, the more they have to keep backing it up. Yeah. You know, like even some of the talk coming into this game, you know, well, we've, got to, we've got to go even harder. We've got to double down on the first game. Well, you, you actually don't. You, if you're happy with the way you, that you played in the first game. Just go and do that again, because yep. that's proven that that pushed Australia to the limit. Game one, you don't have to go any harder. I mean, this is this is Ashley's cricket. This is Test match cricket. You, you can't be giving things away yeah. easily. Correct. And I think in the first couple of games, from what I've seen, there's been I think England are given a few things away a little bit easier than what you'd expect mm -hmm. in an Ashes series. You have a lot of good calls during the day. I think your best one was, how on earth every time Australia goes out to bat. Does England just bring the clouds over? Someone's because got a remote control. It's got this control that drags them in from somewhere and it just stops right over the top of this ground. Because it happened again today, didn't yeah, it? it did, yeah. uh, England were bowled out, Usman Khawaja and uh, Dave Warner go out and all of a sudden the clouds come in. They had that tricky period mm. before the break, um, but they got back to some old-fashioned Test match cricket. Yep, they did. Mm. They were only going to twos. Uh, the thing that I admire so much about Usman Khawaja is the fact that he has not left his bubble. Mm. He's just stuck there, stood firm, a couple of drives, if there's anything short he'll pull it away, but he's just defended and he's played and missed and he's just looked in complete control. Mm. He's almost looked as in complete control as Steve Smith was once he got in yesterday, yeah. where Steve Smith just dictated the way that the game was going to go. Usman Kawaj just, just stood there from ball one in Birmingham and said, my series, my game, come get me because I'm not going to get you. Yeah. Davey Warner got out of his bubble a little bit and played differently to what he did in yeah, the first innings in Edbeston. It seemed like a bit of a cat on a hot tin roof mm. starting today. Yeah, and, big and, time. And, you know, it, was it just that you were on in comms? Was it just that little stint getting through until the break? Or, but, um, yeah, I don't know, he just looked, looked like he started in a, in a different manner. And he, he, t he tends to play that way a lot in the second innings, Davey. When, when they're trying to set up a game, and set up a, he likes to come out and try and impose himself a bit yeah. more. But yeah. today it didn't. It went the other way. Yeah. You know, he was seven <laughs> off 40 balls at one stage. And... As hard as he was trying to score, he actually couldn't get the, couldn't get the ball away. So, mm. yeah. But I, I agree with Kawaja. I mean, it's the thing about England's you know baseball. If I look look at it and break it down, the way that they bat is trying to create as much time for them in the game to get twenty wickets with the ball. Mm -hmm. yep. right? But they've got an attack that they know is not as effective as it once was. So they need to create peri long periods of time in the game. But that suits Kawaja because Kawaja's one that bat. takes time out of the game. You know, yeah. it's Kawaja yeah. and Smith. All they will do is they'll bat and bat and bat, mm -hmm. take time out of the game, which which makes this whole approach of England so much more difficult. Mm. It also gives the Australian bowlers plenty of time to recover. 100%. Yeah, that's it. Plenty of time to recover. Puzzle, You're going to bat it? for 70 overs or mm -hmm. 75 overs. There is no fast bowler in the world that thinks that that's a bad thing if you're in the opposition. Yeah. 75 overs, what you get? Three spells? What, bowl 15 overs? Mm. You Set go. yourself 15 overs, that's it. Yeah. And, and the bowling the... rates at the moment, that goes over four days. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of bowlers, uh, back in your, both of your days, if a bowler just ran down the wicket, finger in the air, thinking that that was out mm. and didn't turn to the umpire, you'd get fined, wouldn't you? Stuart Broad did I that. Play, I, I, I played with Broad a lot, <laughs> and he did it a lot. And he used to get into trouble for it. Mm. I don't know, he, he may get into trouble tonight for it. Yeah. I don't know. I'm sure the other would have spoken to him, yeah. A couple of close calls, didn't he? Or well, one very... One, one very... <laughs> stumping into legs. One three reds. <laughs> yeah, he wasn't that happy when we saw Baz, didn't we, with a little finger <laughs> up, and they pushed Broadie over the edge. Yeah, if you could lip read, you could tell he wasn't overly yeah, happy. Wasn't yeah. It was um, pretty much like the Australia's first innings. It felt as if... They bowled well and they were just a bit unlucky and they just couldn't find edges to I get those breakfast. I think there was one stat going around the comms box earlier. I think the first part of the Australian opening 
combination they played and missed at 19 or 20 balls. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the same thing happened in the first innings. Mm. So we, we talked about how good Australia were day one and England were a little bit off day one, but I think they had 24 plays and misses day one as well. Yeah. So yeah. not every, not well, not a lot has gone England's way. I thought they bowled a whole lot better though in the second innings than they did in the first innings. I think their length was a little yes. bit fuller, yes. but still that didn't that didn't produce the edge. So you, and you could see some of the frustration coming out, couldn't you? With you know, Jimmy hasn't looked that comfortable right through yeah. the game. Brody, yeah. that when that one was, you know, not referred, the frustrating the frustration started to come out, and um, yeah. the Australians would be loving seeing that. Yeah. Is it last man standing for this Ashes series? We lose Leach at the start of the series. We've lost Lyon now, so there are two key spinners on, on either side. There's mm. an injury to Pope. Stokes had a little pull up there out in the, in the field. Warner's got one on the hands. Martin's got one on the hands. Yeah. Again, it's test cricket. Mm. We've all been there. Sometimes you've just got to play through the pain. Mm. You wake up the majority of the time playing Ashes cricket with pain. Um, your test career, you play with pain. I don't think there's many days when you've played 10, 20, 30, 40 test matches that you wake up and you just feel like it's your first. Yeah. No way. Uh, so you can see Stokes is as committed to the cause as anything. He is, he's sore. He's really sore. I watched him really closely in the IPL. Did quite a few of the Chennai games towards the end. Uh, been there for the last two weeks. and. He was in pain. He was in a lot of pain, uh, but he's turning up here and he's trying. And, and what more can you ask of a of a leader? He really he's trying. Yeah. He hasn't bowled today though, has he? He hasn't bowled in this innings. No. So you know, saw. that's probably a bit of a concern as well. Um, and I think you know, well I think we said before the, the first ball was bowled that this is going to be a war of attrition. You know, the five yeah. the five games in, in yeah. six weeks here. Australia had one you know yeah. immediately before it as well. We we thought that. Each team would have to look at rotating their bowlers through at, at some stage. That'll probably look after itself now. There'll yep. be guys that are getting injured. It'll, it'll probably look after itself. Yeah. Um, I mean, England, to me, they, de they desperately need to get Wood into this side. They need Wood in the side with Tong. I think Tong's been their best bowler in this game mm -hmm. so far. Just to add a bit more potency to their attack, yes, especially, if, 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 especially if Ben's not there doing what he, what he does. Yeah. So mm. let's see what happens in the next one. Well, the last part of this one. I'll be the next one. <laughs> Only three days between uh, the next two tests. Are you doing, you're not doing that one. No, no, we're, we're missing leads. <laughs> we're missing you, overs. Oh, thank you, guys. I appreciate it. 98 overs tomorrow. Um, I'm gathering from the conversation here is bat and bat and bat until you can't lose and say over to you, England, for a big total. Probably, yeah. I mean, you've, one, as I said, you've got to be good enough to do that first. Yeah, yeah. 220 yeah. ahead. If there's mm. a bit of a cloud in the morning, it's not going to be easy. We saw, you know, run scoring wasn't easy today, was it? No, um, you know, not at all. Usman's battled all day for his... 50 or not out. You've got to be good enough to do that. You've got to be, you've got to be you know, good enough to earn the right to be able to think about declaring. Um, good, good enough to earn the right to, to throw the ball in England's court and say, there you go, go and try and win a Nash's Test match. But I, I, they'll be trying to get as many as they can. Yeah. One, because they know this England batting team is dangerous as well. It, it is a dangerous batting lineup. They will throw caution to the wind. We've seen them chase big totals in the past. We've seen them win games that they probably shouldn't have won in the last 12 months. So, um, and Australia being 1-0 up now, they won't give. They'll, oh, sorry, they won't give. They'll make it as hard as they can to give England a sniff to win this game. It's a helicopter, not a, was, uh, yeah, not a bug no, no, going across yeah. the ball. There. <laughs> Slight boring. panic there. <laughs> uh, Ricky KP, thanks for your time thanks, tonight. Uh, thank you for tuning in as well. We'll be back at quarter past ten tomorrow morning for the start of day four.